In June of 2015, a white supremacist carried out a mass shooting in a church in Charleston, South Carolina, killing nine. The racially motivated attack sparked protests against racism, which coalesced around South Carolina's use of the Confederate battle flag, which in turn sparked counter protests from a very old group with some surprisingly modern strategies, the Ku Klux Klan. This is not the same clan as was 50 years ago or, you know, or in the 1800s. This is certainly a different clan given so many different factors. Um, they use social media now, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. That's Johnny Milano. He's a photojournalist who has spent the last few years documenting what life inside the modern day Ku Klux Klan is really like. When I first started the project in 2012, it was right around the time when uh, the, the Tea Party was kind of gaining traction in the United States. The, the far right conservative movement was garnering a large amount of support within the population and specifically there were a number of anti-illegal immigration bills um, that were popping up across the United States. Johnny also saw a startling resurgence of hate-based groups like the KKK and decided to learn more. What he learned was that in spite of its uptick in popularity, the Klan is not what it once was. In the 1920s, the group boasted three million members. Today, estimates put that membership at a mere five to 8,000, and those are split among dozens of small warring factions. So it stands to reason that gaining new members is high on the KKK's agenda, and it's probably why those factions have taken to social media and turned up at political rallies. As Johnny observed, they even invite interested parties to their clandestine meetings, so they can listen to readings from the group's handbook, The Chloran, and watch the burning of the cross. For Johnny, capturing these images hasn't been easy, especially as he's not a member and has no desire to be. I was threatened uh, more than once. I had one guy tell me he would uh, shoot me in the face if I took his picture, um, which of course I did not. The KKK might be small and fragmented, but it still poses a real threat to society. As David Cunningham, a KKK expert, puts it, these marginal, isolated extremist cells themselves can become breeding grounds for unpredictable violence. Dylan Roof, the man who attacked the church in Charleston, was sympathetic to the KKK, and he became a stark example of unpredictable violence. As the rest of the nation battles against racial hatred, prejudice, and hostility, the KKK remains firmly on the other side. They're hell-bent on disrupting progress by inciting a culture war in order to further their own agenda. These groups have gained more membership based on instances like um, uh, where they, they kind of use the death of the cop as a recruiting tool. So they kind of inflame the current situation concerning race relations throughout America as evidence of an upcoming race war that is inevitable and um, right around the corner. Today, a lot of our attention is focused on foreign terrorism and the threat it could pose here in the US. But these photos tell a different story of a domestic threat that's a little bit too close to home. Central American migrants are being falsely accused of human trafficking in Mexico. Watch this video to find out more. According to Luis, of those 60 traffickers who were convicted and sentenced, 10 of them were eventually freed and three of them were completely exonerated. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.